If you ever looked at these smart wall panels that are on the market, like the NS Panel or the NS Panel Pro, and thought that you like the idea of them, of being able to control your lighting or heating or scenes all from this one touch screen that is central in a room, but you don't quite like how some of them are implemented. Maybe the UI doesn't look very good, or maybe it's laggy, or maybe it just doesn't feel like a premium product that belongs in your smart home. Whatever it is, that is where this product comes in. This is the Rhythm Home Smart Switch, and this is a direct competitor to the NS Panel Pro, kind of. So on the top it says it gives you quick lighting and scenes access, gives you easy audio management, that is definitely something that will differentiate it from the NS Panel Pro. We have climate control and it replaces your existing light switch, we've got temperature and humidity sensor built in as well as a proximity and light sensor which is pretty cool and it runs on Wi-Fi. Over on the back you can see that we have a few different integrations of what it works with. So we have Sonos, Philip Hue, Tado, Homey, Blue OS, Fibaro, Racco and HD Anywhere. No Home Assistant integration. I mean, guys, what are you doing? Though we may be able to get Home Assistant to work, let's find out. It does say that if we open the box we confirm that we are accepting the license. I've never really seen that before, like just opening the box confirms that you accept their license agreement. I mean, not really a fan of that. Oh, nice, nice box. I do like those magnetic hinges. Inside we have our welcome card or instruction card. Won't be needing that. And then we have our smart switch. Let's put that to the side. Underneath we have backlight, metal, and we have a couple of mountain screws. So immediately looking at this, you see that it has a little rhythm logo down at the bottom. Uh, up at the top, we have what looks like our proximity and light sensors over here. Micro SD card, micro USB, and it looks like a temperature and humidity sensor over here. And then on the back, we have our connection. So this does appear to have a built-in uh, relay so that we can control like say a thermostat directly from that so that is a nice addition and then we have our live and neutral wires up at the top so it does require a neutral although on their website it does say that you can kind of bypass the neutral somehow side by side with the NS panel so this is the rhythm switch over on this side uh, it looks pretty much identical other than the uh, slots at the bottom so we have the SD card on the on the rhythm and not on the NS panel. The NS panel is a, con a plastic construction whereas the rhythm is metal surround so it does feel uh, quite nice in hand, feels a lot more sturdy. Both four inch touchscreens but I guess the biggest differentiating factor between these two is the price. So the Sonoff NS Panel Pro is currently available for 85 to 90 pounds and the Rhythm switch is £250. That's some pretty big price increase. I'm not sure how it costs like almost three times more than the NS Panel Pro. That's a pretty steep price increase, but let's take a look. Looks like you just install this back panel and then plug in your wires and slot on. So easy installation but it does appear to be a bit insecure and unsafe let me just check yeah with the wires connected you kind of just like put it on and like click it into place slide it down and that's that's on there but i mean that doesn't appear to be the safest thing because picture this you have it on your wall like this so it's it's connected into the into the regular wall switch and you can just come over uh click it up like that and then pull it out to expose the bare wires whilst they're live. There's no screws or anything like that. Knowing how I was as a child, I was very inquisitive, shall we say. If I knew that this came off the wall like this, I was definitely gonna play with that as a child. I don't know, what do you think? Let me know down in the comments. I think that's kind of dangerous, to be honest. So one of the selling points of the Rhythm Switch is that it doesn't require any additional app or any computer to set up. You can all be done from here and then everything can be controlled from the panel too, which is kind of nice. No need to install, you know, some random app just to set it up and control it. You can do it all from the panel. Then we can just type in our Wi-Fi password. Okay, connected to Wi-Fi and now it's doing a quick update. Now, I was just saying that we have no scenes set up and I think you should be able to add some demo data from the settings. So if we go into integrations, add integrations, and you can actually see a list of the integrations that it supports. So we've got Philips Hue, 
It does have a HTTP API type integration as well. Uh, and Sonos is there and they do have some more on their website, which we will talk about in just a second. We also have some demo scenes, media and climate just for testing. So we can add those. And then it kind of lets you choose which demo data to set up and which screen to add them to. So it's pretty cool. It allows you to arrange which buttons are shown on the screen. So you can rearrange the layout or you can choose which ones to hide, which ones to show. Uh, and that type of thing. You can change the labels all from the screen, which is pretty cool, all from the settings. And then once you've done that, you get your access to your toggles. So turn on, turn off. Uh, we have our scene, so read scene, nightlight, bright. And if I now add the media integration, and then we'll also add to the climate integration so we can see how they all work. So now on the left-hand side, we have a little climate uh, label and we also have a music label down at the bottom. So if we hit climate, and then we select our climate, so living room, and then we can toggle on and off, nice. Down at the bottom, it also gives us our current temperature reading. So that's using the inbuilt temperature sensor. Notice how fast and responsive the UI is to actually control. So it's, yeah, super responsive. The Anos panel is pretty good, but you do notice some delay when switching from screen to screen or occasionally it will stutter. But this is super responsive, at least so far. You know, we're, we're switching from screen to screen. Uh, no problem, the, the animations are really fast. It doesn't ever seem to, to hang up or lag. You'll notice with the NS panel, it's it's definitely a bit laggy and see when I try and swipe across the thermostat screen, it, it registers a hit on the on the thermostat instead of swiping. So it's pretty good, but you'll do you do notice a lot of lag with the NS panel. In comparison to the to the rhythm, it's super snappy, you know? You just swipe from, from screen to screen, control the Control the thermostat, no problem. Move from screen, screen, screen. Really fast and snappy, whereas you do notice uh, quite a bit of lag on the, uh, on the NS panel. So the other cool thing that the rhythm switch does that the NS panel doesn't, as far as I'm aware, is it can do music. So if we go down into the music section and then up in the top, we can select which speaker we want to play on. So you can have different things playing on different speakers. And this works through the Sonos integration. So if you have a Sonos, then you can connect it to the rhythm switch. And then you should be able to just play music and that will start playing on your Sonos or whatever speaker you have connected. And you can actually control the playback from here. So you can uh, skip song, you can go to the next one, play pause, go back, change the volume. That's pretty cool. You can mute, repeat. So that is one advantage that the rhythm does is that it can play music whereas the NS panel cannot, at least as far as I'm aware, and without doing anything in Home Assistant. Speaking of Home Assistant, let's try and actually connect up an actual light to the rhythm so we can see it working uh, and see if we can actually get it working with Home Assistant because currently it's not a listed or supported integration, uh, but I think we might be able to get it working through uh, other means. It does seem like if you use this add-on for Home Assistant called Emulated Hue, that you can expose entities to the rhythm switch, which would be pretty cool so we can control them. That will talk to Home Assistant, which will in turn control our lights. Now that we've installed the emulated Hue add-on, I think we should just be able to enter the IP address of our Home Assistant server. Link mode is enabled and completed. Yeah, nice. It comes up with all of the areas that we've got configured. So these areas are pulled through from Home Assistant. So Again, another reason why it's really important to set up areas so that it all comes through like this. And if we select office, we have office on off. Not sure what, what one that is, but let's, uh, let's add it. And now we can turn on our office TV light behind us. Nice. It's pretty quick actually. That's one of the downsides though that the, or the NS Panel Pro has an advantage over this is that you can control colors uh, it doesn't seem like you can control colors. You can only toggle the on off on the rhythm. So that's kind of a missing feature if you want to change or choose different colors and you kind of out of luck. I don't think there's anything in the settings that lets you do that. Nothing in the settings that lets you change kind of or uh, toggle the color for any of the devices, but you can rearrange the order. So if you want to move the office up a little bit, you can do that. And you can also set a picture for different or identifying different uh, scenes, which is kind of nice. Kind of a shame you can't toggle the color of the light. You can only kind of control the on off uh, or toggle scenes, which I guess would do color, but being able to change the color on the fly straight from the display here would be really cool. But other than that, no real complaints. It works well for what it does. Other than, of course, 
the price. That is basically the biggest downfall of this. I cannot possibly understand why this costs £250. If you're going to have one of these, then you're likely going to need one in each room in your house, again, because it's going to control the devices for that specific room. And if you're talking about £250 per unit for each room, maybe even you would need multiple for bigger rooms, that's going to add up very quickly. Just four rooms, you're already into £1,000. That's insane for this kind of device and if we take a look on their website actually if you want a little tabletop stand for this so it kind of sits at an angle maybe for an office desk something like that that costs an additional 50 pounds on top of the 250 so we're already into 300 pounds there and then some of the integrations themselves cost even more so the Philips Hue one thankfully is free uh, and so is the Sonos just as well because both of those companies rinse you for as much money as you have. The Homey integration costs £20 for some reason. I don't know why that would be. Tado, Blue OS, Fabaro, uh, and some of these others, they all cost £20 also. Like, guys, haven't you, haven't you got enough money out of us for the £250 for the Switch? I don't know why we need to pay an additional £20 on top of that for the integrations. I really just don't know who this product is for. I mean, it is really nice, it works well, but the price is so expensive that it's just gonna put most people off. I just don't think this is a viable solution for most enthusiasts or regular smart home users. And then if we're talking about installed solutions like Control 4, Crest and that type of thing, those already have their own touchscreens and panels that are integrated fully and natively with those solutions and are more of a professional installer type solution and that just puts the rhythm in a really weird place where it's too difficult to recommend for the price uh, and i just don't understand who the target market is it doesn't even have that many integrations i mean there was just a small number of integrations on their website luckily we did manage to get it working with home assistant but that's because Home Assistant is so versatile and you can kind of get it to work with anything. So it is a nice little product, but it's just too expensive to be able to recommend at that price point. That is an astronomical price. I'd want that to be like at least 50% of the current pricing to be able to even maybe make a recommendation. Yeah, it's a little bit of a shame. So that is it for the Rhythm Smart Switch. What did you guys think of it? Did you think it was worthy of the price point? I would be very surprised, but do let me know down in the comments what your opinion is. Pretty cool that we did get it working with Home Assistant and it is a really nice layout, super responsive, feels like a premium product, but that price point though. <laughs> let me know your thoughts down in the comments as always. I do hope you enjoyed this video. Please let me know what you want me to cover next in the comments down below. Also, thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one.